Hey, I'm back. By now you've learned quite a lot about how medical personnel use health information to make decisions. You've also seen how even simple measurements like blood pressure can say a lot about a person's condition. Now you're gonna put yourselves in the roles of medical teams. You'll use the same information that a doctor would have to diagnose the health problems of Arturo, Brian, and Angela. Remember, we left those guys in the emergency room. All three appeared to have a serious medical problem, maybe even a heart attack. In class, you calculated their lifetime risk for heart attack. Now it's time to figure out what actually happened to our three patients. Doctors have different ways to determine if a person actually is having a heart attack. One of these is the EKG. Remember the electrodes placed on each patient's chest by the emergency medical technicians? These wire connections record peaks and valleys of electrical activity in the heart, created by contracting muscles in each section of the heart. This information then can be printed on an electrocardiogram or EKG, a sort of visual roadmap that represents what is happening in the heart. Here's a normal EKG. And here's an EKG from a patient having a heart attack. An EKG is not the only way to confirm a diagnosis. Heart muscle cells damaged or destroyed during a heart attack release proteins, including creatine phosphokinase and troponin, into the bloodstream. The presence of higher than normal levels of these proteins in a blood sample usually means that a heart attack has occurred. Now, you're gonna have a chance to figure out what happened to Arturo, Brian, and Angela. You'll be able to use the same kinds of information available to an emergency medical team, order lab tests, and obtain exam results. Before starting, review what you already know about each patient and ask your teacher for information explaining what the different tests measure. Let's see how you do. I'll check back with you later. Arturo is 56 years old, still pretty young. He arrived in the ER with a cut on his head, stomach pains, and nausea. Vital signs taken at his house and in the ER showed fever, low oxygen saturation, high blood pressure, and a rapid heart rate. Not exactly a picture of health. At least his EKGs were normal. The emergency room physician noticed that Arturo had tenderness and pain in his lower right abdomen. Nothing else in the exam was remarkable. The physician ordered tests of Arturo's cardiac enzymes, sodium and potassium levels, and a complete blood count, otherwise known as a CBC. Results showed high sodium, possibly from dehydration, and an elevated white blood cell count, indicating inflammation or infection. The initial diagnosis was appendicitis, but a cardiac event still could not be ruled out, so the physician ordered an abdominal CAT scan, which confirmed a swollen appendix. Arturo was prepped for an appendectomy, and the surgery was performed without complication. Turns out that despite his unhealthy diet and lifestyle choices, Arturo was very lucky. According to the test results, he didn't have a heart attack. Were you surprised? What about Brian? By now you know, Brian's 40 years old. He's not overweight, but he smokes a pack of cigarettes each day and he's been under a lot of stress. In fact, his life sounds like a bad country song. His dog died, he has problems with his girlfriend. Now you know the rest. Brian has collapsed at school and arrived at the emergency room complaining of chest pain. Good thing one of his fellow students called 911 right away. Vital signs in the ER showed tachycardia and accelerated heart rate. Vitals also indicated low oxygen saturation and high blood pressure. Initial follow-up EKGs showed a fast, regular heartbeat, but the pattern wasn't normal. In fact, Brian's symptoms and test results indicate a myocardial infarction, a heart attack. 
Diagnostic tests for cardiac enzymes suggested the same thing because levels of CKMB and troponin were elevated in the 24 hours following the event. Next, the healthcare team had to determine where in Brian's heart the heart attack happened. To do so, they conducted a coronary angiogram, a special x-ray test that uses dye and a camera to photograph the blood flow in an artery. The procedure revealed blockages in two arteries, which had significantly reduced the flow of blood to Brian's heart. One of Brian's blocked arteries looked like this. This condition, decreased blood supply resulting from obstructed arteries, is known as ischemia. It's the cause for most heart attacks. An ischemic heart disease, which includes myocardial infarction, a fancy term for heart attack, is a leading killer among both men and women. Fortunately, doctors were able to open Brian's blocked arteries using a procedure called balloon angioplasty with stenting. This surgery involves guiding a special tube with a tiny balloon at the top through a blood vessel in an arm or a leg and into the affected heart artery. When the balloon reaches the blockage, it is inflated several times. This process compacts the plaque, widens the opening in the artery, and increases blood flow to the heart. Afterward, a wire mesh tube called a stent is inserted to keep the artery open. Okay, after Brian's scare, let's see how Angela's doing. She's our youngest patient and seemed to be the healthiest too. You'll remember that Angela's 35. She's in pretty good shape and does not smoke. But during a morning run, she had a sharp pain in her side, indigestion, and shortness of breath. She also vomited before and after her trip to the emergency room. Her vital signs indicated tachycardia, a faster than normal heart rate, and high blood pressure. But her pulse, respiration rate, EKG, and temperature were normal. A physical exam revealed tenderness in Angela's lower abdomen. The physician ordered a routine pregnancy test along with tests for CBC, sodium, potassium, and cardiac enzymes. Let's take a look at her test results. Angela's electrolytes and cardiac enzymes were normal. However, her CBC showed a low red blood cell count and low hemoglobin. So she's iron deficient and anemic. And she's pregnant. Congratulations, Angela. This helps to explain why she felt ill during and after her run. Angela and her husband, William, had been hoping to start a family, so the pregnancy is very good news.